Yeah, it's got a Hemi. All right, power wagon, about a month ago. My winch stopped retracting in when I pulled it out to try to use it. I have this set on free spool right now. So this is, okay, so the battery ended up dying on me. Spool control, in, nothing. Now I have this set on free spool like I was saying. Um, it will, it does want to spool out. So uh, what I believe is one of the solenoids to pull it in either just got corrosion on it or worn out just from not using it. So we're going to see what it takes to remove this. I did have it, I tried to spool it in some myself and then wrapped a uh, strap around it because where I was at, you know, you really couldn't do too much with it. And <laughs> this big cable really, you really can't go nowhere with it so you can keep the truck drivable. So right now what I'm going to do so far here is I'm going to remove the front bumper so that I can get access into the winch because it looks like that's going to be the easiest way by looking at this because of the being what the weight of this is this cover here actually has to lift off to be able to get access to the solenoids so that's what we're going to try to do because if we get this thing off maybe I can set something up and just slide it forward so it doesn't have to drop down but Let's get this uh, cable out of the way and the strap wrapped up and uh, get this bumper removed. I don't know how good to, they're starting to come in. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then up here, this is the plug for the fog light, fog light harness. You're going to want to unplug this. So we're, all right. So up in here, here's our fog light clip. We just pulled it out. Slide your red piece up. Let's see if I can get this one handed. Push in here on this thing right here. Slide the clip out. We get these two, the one on this side, the one on the other side, yeah, then we'll be done. So we can see down in here, it's like two of our main points are going to be right here, right here. So I'm going to get a wire brush, clean these threads up, spray some lubricant on it, and see if they'll actually come loose. Alright, so on this side, they got a swivel and an 18. I was able to come down from the back and get the back one. Now we're going to get the front on this side, and it'll be the same over here, down through the back, and down through the front. I already got these bark loose too, so we're going to get these out, and then we'll go from there. Alright, these were out, these were out. Move this one back here was a 10 for the wiring. I got two 5-gallon buckets. This is stock height, so there's a couple 2x4s. 
it's a little loose on this side because it's still hanging on the sway bar. But we did get this release down far enough so that we can get access to remove the panel to get to our settlement. So it looks like this is held on here with two eights. One in the front and one in the rear of the cover. Gonna get these off and show you what it looks like inside. I just want to mention there was another one over here on this side. So we have three of those removed now. So we can lift this up and actually see inside here. So it looks like we have four solenoids and we're gonna have to figure out which one gets the power to go up, which it looks like uh, looks like kind of they're bridged so it actually flips both but uh, I'm gonna get some air and blow this off a little bit and then double check the connections for uh, corrosion and stuff too so and I'll look around see if any of these are cracked okay so it turns out that I did a little bit of testing and I found out that the green wire is the one that gets hot that comes out of the remote off of the switch when you go to spool in. Okay. For some reason, that wire runs through here and then down through this right here into the motor. So, right now, that's what I got to figure out what this is to see what that is. But anyway, I did loosen everything, I double checked all the connections. Um, I didn't get too, too picky as far as cleaning anything up yet because I didn't know what was going on. Right now I'm going to try to reassemble this top and then do a little bit more research and see if I can figure out what this is. I might just be able to jump these out for now if this is like some kind of a protection or if there's a bad connection inside here. I'm not sure but I did, I did actually jump 12 volts over to it and was able to get the solenoid to click. I didn't have the motor hooked up yet to try that, but I'm going to try that right now. Okay, the 12 volt comes in over here on the red. That's a solenoid that needs to have the power. And to get everything to switch properly, I'm still having to activate my switch. That's actually out. This is in. Here's, here's with no power going to it. In. In. So whatever, whatever runs through this little plug over here, that's where our issue is. So I'm going to get this all tucked back together here as far as the top is. So get the all right. So what we're looking at here, what I believe is the thermal protection on the end when you're drawing it in I guess uh, it builds heat it did it, it did shut off on me once or twice when I was pulling just off of the battery but with jumping that out I now have spool going in both directions This is a little, a little hokey at the moment, but sure is. Sure is a nice thing to get this cable wound back in here. All right, so the moral of the story is you didn't need to remove the winch or the bumper. So if you have a problem with the winch not wanting to spool in, but everything else seems to be working. Try and plug in the thermal protection on this one, which comes in here, and uh, jump it out up here and see if that makes it spool in before you go taking the time to remove everything. And then you'll know.